Today, AMD have unveiled the Radeon RX 9060 XT, which comes in a bad version and a good version. The bad version is of course the 8GB model, and the good version, or potentially good depending on how it performs, is the 16GB model. AMD have copied Nvidia's RTX 5060 Ti homework here, giving both models the same name, which is sure to make it more difficult for consumers to find the good version. Nevertheless, we have all the details, so let's get into it after a word from today's sponsor. The Harbour Unbox Computex coverage is brought to you by MSI Thermal Grizzly G Skill and Trix. Check out MSI's range of Z890 and B860 motherboards built for performance with robust VRAM designs that are cooled by massive heat sinks. There's more than enough power delivery to support the latest Core Ultra desktop processors from Intel. Also enjoy ultra fast networking, Wi-Fi 7 and at least five gigabit wide LAN. There's also support for PCIe 5.0 along with MSI's screwless M.2 Shield Frozer for quick and easy installation of storage. Learn more about MSI's range of Z890 and B860 motherboards via the links in the video description. Also supporting our Computex trip this year is Thermal Grizzly and their Duranaut high performance thermal paste offering extreme long-term stability combined with outstanding thermal conductivity. It's not electrically conductive and won't harden over time. So for more information, please check the links in the video description. So the two versions of the Radeon RX 9060 XT will be available on June 5th and priced at $300 for the 8GB card and $350 US for the 16GB card. AMD's main focus here is on the 16GB model, which they're claiming will be the dominant, more widespread card in Western markets. And with this pricing, it will be the cheapest current generation 16GB graphics card. Essentially, the RX 9060 XT is half of the RX 9070 XT. It uses a brand new Navi 44 die, which has half the core and memory configuration of Navi 48 at nearly half the die size. It's ended up at 199 square millimeters. Instead of receiving 4096 shader units in 64 SMs, Navi 44 provides 2048 shader units in 32 SMs. The memory bus has also been slashed from 256 bit to 128 bit, though 20 gigabits per second GDDR6 is still being utilized here. This results in 320 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, again, half that of the flagship RDNA 4 model. AMD has not provided game clock information for this model yet, but the boost clock is listed at 3.13 GHz, which is a little higher than the 9070 XT's 2.97 GHz. We're also getting a PCIe 5.0x16 interface, not x8, which is good news for those with older PCIe 4.0 or 3.0 motherboards, along with DisplayPort 2.1, UHBR 13.5, and HDMI 2.1. The 9060 XT has one less display output than the Navi 48 models, with one HDMI and two display ports. Total board power is listed as a range of 150 to 182 watts. This is due to the 16 gig model having more memory chips than the 8 gig model and higher overall board power as a result. However, we've been told the GPU itself is identical regardless of which memory configuration you get. So same GPU power, same core configuration and clock speeds. But yeah, essentially this card is roughly half that of the RX 9070 XT, especially for the 8GB model, which also halves the memory capacity. With half the hardware, it makes sense to expect the RX 9060 XT to deliver around half the performance of the RX 9070 XT. AMD are claiming the 9060 XT 16GB will be around 6% faster than the RTX 5060 Ti 8GB on average across a 40 game sample, testing at 1440p using ultra settings. Now you might notice here they are comparing their 16 gigabyte model versus Nvidia's 8 gigabyte model. That's because they are the closest in price. I asked AMD about whether that would also be true comparing 16 gigabyte versus 16 gigabyte, and they said we should expect both the 9060 XT and 5060 Ti to offer similar performance. Based on our testing of other models, this would make the 9060 XT about 35 to 40% slower than a 9070 XT. So a little better than half the performance from half the die size and similar performance to a Radeon RX 7700 XT from the previous generation. When running some calculations based on AMD's claims, which of course you should take with a grain of salt, the 9060 XT should offer over 20% better value than the RTX 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte. Similar performance, but with the MSRP cut from $430 US to $350. Of course, this is assuming both the AMD and Nvidia cards will be available at those prices, something that typically isn't the case these days, especially in the United States. 
It should also mean around 15% better value than the RTX 5060 Ti 8 gigabyte, but with the added benefit of a more suitable 16 gigabyte memory capacity. The 8GB card at $300 US should offer around 20% better value than the RTX 5060 Ti 8GB as well, though this card will be much less appealing due to its limited VRAM at a high $300 price point. Really, this card either shouldn't exist or should be priced below $200, which is probably unrealistic given the performance of the GPU itself. As we've said many times now, we strongly feel $300 graphics cards should have more than 8GB of memory in the year 2025. The saving grace here is that NVIDIA is still selling an 8GB GPU for $380, which is even worse, while AMD's most expensive 8GB card will be $300. With the RX 9060 XT positioned as it is, it has the potential to kill the entire RTX 5060 series. Along with claims of superior value than the 5060 Ti, it should be better value than the RTX 5060. For an extra $50 comparing MSRPs, the 16GB 9060 XT should offer double the VRAM and a higher performance tier. We know the RTX 5060 performs around the level of a 4060 Ti 8GB, but the 9060 XT should be more like a 5060 Ti, which is 20% faster. Also available will be a card with the same VRAM and price as the 5060, but a tier higher in performance. The other interesting comparison to make is to the RX 7700 XT. While this GPU launched at $450 US, it quickly dropped to around $400 and was available at that price at the end of 2024. Essentially, the RX 9060 XT is the successor to this model, offering similar raster performance, better ray tracing, access to FSR4 upscaling, and an improvement from 12 to 16 gigabytes of VRAM for a $100 lower MSRP and potentially $50 lower real pricing. That doesn't sound amazing from a value standpoint, but the 9060 XT is looking like a clearly superior product. On the other hand, it's also an upgrade from the 7600 XT, which was priced at $330. For $20 more, AMD are claiming to offer the same VRAM, better features, and potentially upwards of 30% more performance. While we're really liking the look of the 9060 XT and its $350 price point for a 16GB GPU, the 8GB card simply shouldn't have the same name, or at least a name that is very similar to the 16GB model. This is a huge issue we had with the RTX 5060 Ti, where the existence of a good model and a bad model with the same name made it easy for consumers to fall into the trap of purchasing the terrible 8GB model. Often the 8GB card would come up first at retailers when searching for the 5060 Ti, and because it was the cheapest version, it would be the most enticing for gamers who weren't overly familiar with the differences between 8 and 16GB. Those gamers would buy the 8GB card and be left with a model that's instantly obsolete. The exact same issues will be present with the RX 9060 XT 16 and 8GB models, and this could have been easily prevented if AMD simply called the 8GB model something else, like the RX 9060 without the XT at the end. Now maybe they are also planning to release an RX 9060 at some point, but there's plenty of numbers to use, and these two cards should be more distinct so gamers don't fall into a trap. This is of course in addition to the fact that $300 for an 8GB card is just too much to pay, but I won't go over all of that again. On a more positive note, AMD made it very clear that they will not be trying to bury or manipulate RX 9060 XT reviews. With the launch date set at June 5th, reviewers will have access to 9060 XT drivers for both the 8 and 16GB models early next week, giving a week and a half of pre-release access. Samples should also be ready very shortly, and there will be no restrictions on 8GB and 16GB sampling. Both will be available to test before launch on request. Again, the focus will be on the 16GB models, but we recently saw a whole bunch of shenanigans from NVIDIA relating to the 8GB RTX 5060 Ti and RTX 5060, including preventing 8GB 5060 Ti samples from reaching media pre-launch and not running a review program at all for the 5060. AMD are doing none of that with this launch, or so they claim. The other main graphics related announcement from AMD at Computex 2025 is FSR Redstone, the next evolution of FSR that is coming in the second half of 2025. This is a set of additional features coming to the FSR family, all of which are AI based. There's neural radiance caching, ray regeneration, aka AMD's version of NVIDIA's ray reconstruction, and an updated version of frame generation that uses AI to enhance image quality. We got some still image examples of how these features will improve ray trace gaming. We're expecting them to offer similar advantages to other technologies on the market today, 
but for Radeon GPU owners. Provided these technologies work well, they should allow AMD to close the features gap to NVIDIA who rely on tech like ray reconstruction and AI-based frame generation for path trace gaming. As the technology isn't expected until the second half of 2025, it's not 100% clear how FSR Redstone will be integrated. With FSR 4 upscaling, right now it's a driver-based toggle that converts FSR 3.1 implementations into AI-based FSR 4. This might also be possible with AI-based FSR frame generation based on what AMD was saying, but other features like neural radiance caching and ray regeneration, those might require game integration and additional API. So we'll see how that goes later in the year. AMD also announced that FSR 4 game support will be expanding to 60 titles on June 5th alongside the launch of the RX 9060 XT, which is relatively quick adoption given we saw around 30 titles supported at the launch of the 9070 XT. The biggest weakness AMD has with FSR 4 isn't the quality of the technology itself, which is very good, but game support compared to NVIDIA's DLSS 4 and DLSS 3. If AMD can continue this pace of FSR 4 title support, that will be great news for Radeon buyers. Finally, a big thank you to G-Skill and Trix for helping to make our Computex trip possible this year. G-Skill offers an amazing range of DDR5 memory with AMD Expo support, allowing you to get the most out of your Ryzen processor. And we've been using their Trident Z5 Neo memory in our test systems for years now, as we rely on it to get the best results. We've also started using Trix coolers, and I've got to say the Panorama SE 360 Black is one of the best looking AIOs I've ever seen. The quality of the rotatable display is incredible, and as complex as the design appears, it's remarkably quick and easy to install. So for more information, please check the links in the video description. So anyway, that's pretty much all of AMD's announcements for Computex 2025 as they relate to graphics, which is really the thing we are most interested in. There are also new Threadripper CPUs, but I'm sure you can find coverage of that at places which are more focused on workstation hardware. I'm certainly quite interested to see how the RX 9060 XT ends up in terms of performance and value, but Steve will be getting into that very shortly once we return from Computex. Anyway, that's it for this video. Now you know what the RX 9060 XT is all about. And as we said, we won't need to review this product from a hotel room in Taipei. We'll be getting back to Australia and testing it very shortly for you guys. So if you're interested in supporting the channel, of course, we've got our Patreon page. Links to that is in the description below. You can sign up for plenty of good benefits. You guys know all about that stuff. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.